Hi, this is Father Jamie. I hope y'all are having a lovely evening wherever you are. I just finished with the five o'clock mass here at Blessed Mother, so just thought I would give you a little synopsis of my homily from the weekend. One of my friends told me one time, my life is gift. My response was, well, I want the receipt. <laughs> you know, um, God calls us to be gift to one another, to empty ourselves. We hear that in our second reading this evening from Paul's letter to the Philippians, where um, he says, Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. And, you know, that is significant. It doesn't really seem fair, though. Let me, ex let me explain that. So, in our first reading, we hear about the prophet Ezekiel talking about um, the people complaining about things not being fair. And the prophet says, well, it's not really God's not uh, unfair. It's your, you that are unfair. And because we're selfish and too focused on the self. But Jesus calls us to be gift to each other, to go beyond being fair, but loving and being just. In the gospel, we hear about the two sons, one who did his father's will and the one who didn't. And, you know, God will take care of us uh, and give us eternal life when we give of ourselves, even if we're not always happy about it, um, when we totally give of ourselves, God will take care of us. We may not see what that looks like in this world, but we need to empty ourselves. And yet, it's not always fair. Life is not fair. You know, this whole virus situation is not fair. Having to wear a mask, having to, to do all these things, social distancing, yada, yada, yada. Allergies are not fair. <laughs> There's so many things in the world that are not fair. Loss of jobs right now, not fair. But again, Jesus emptied himself. That was not fair because Jesus could have taken care of things in another way, but he didn't. He did things the way he did for a reason. He suffered and died for us because, and I'm going to use a fancy theological term here, what is not assumed is not redeemed. In other words, Jesus had to take on our mortal humanity in order to redeem that mortal humanity. Meaning, he took on our bodies, he took on our emotions, our weaknesses, emptied himself of his glory, to become one of us so he could redeem us. That's the example we are to follow. To empty ourselves, empty out our selfishness, give wholeheartedly, not because of gaining something on earth, but to give in order to help one another. You know, the thing that drives my pastor and I crazy is, you know, when all this virus stuff started, you know, before the virus things, we could go to Kroger and it would take us an hour to get in and out of there because we'd run into all kinds of people and talk to everybody. But now, it may take 10 minutes or less because people are not talking, not even acknowledging each other, whether it's out of fear or whatever. We can do better than that. We need to do better than that. We need to empty ourselves, empty our fears, acknowledge one another as human beings made in the image and likeness of God. We can do it. We need to follow that example of Jesus. It can be something as simple as offering a chair to someone, acknowledging someone at Kroger, saying hello, you know, self-sacrifice. May we do it as best we can. That is how we make his kingdom come. And yes, life is not always fair. We are not fair, but God is. He emptied himself for us. May we empty ourselves for one another.
Amen.